This next set of videos will look at recursion, the way the book, that is the Savage book, treats it. And it's a little different from the way I like to usually look at recursion. I like to look at it from the mechanics of how it works. And the book takes a much more abstract view of uh, recursion in the sense of problem solving. And so the, the, the way they look at it is it sort of ignores um, implementation, implementation details like the stack and things like that. They just like to think of it more like the way the mat, uh, a mathematician would think of recursion. Okay, so we will look at recursive void functions, uh, look at how to trace recursive calls, we look at in infinite recursion, what happens when you have runaway recursion. It never is really infinite, just sort of gets out of hand and overflows. Run, you run out of memory, you run out of stack space. That's a basic idea with infinite recursion. Uh, then we look at recursive functions that return a value, not just void functions, but let's say something returns an int. And then we look at how um, uh, how to think recursively, and that's basically thinking like more like a mathematician. And we look at binary search. Okay, so what is recursion? Recursion is when you have a function in a programming language that calls itself. This um, when you have a situation like that, we say that this is a recursive function. That is, when if you were to look inside the function definition, you would see a call to the same function. Normally, we don't do that, um, and we you know, there's a special word for it. It's called recursion. And and later on, what we will see is that uh, you can have a function. In the very beginning, we'll just use functions. We'll set up functions that are recursive. That is, it calls itself and we call itself just once and then later on we'll see that it is actually possible to call the same recursive just have a function call itself many times more than once and then even um, be able to call itself in a loop and that might uh, really seem like something that you shouldn't do but uh, it's, some, it's often very very useful okay C++ is one of many languages that allows recursion so most high-level languages do like Java, C Sharp uh, even C and uh, uh, other languages too. This can be a useful programming technique. It has been for a long time. It does have limitations. You have to know how much uh, stack space to set up. Um, so you have to be careful about how you use recursion. Also, it's uh, it's a little bit hard to get used to if you're not if you don't think like a math mathematician. Basic idea of recursive function. Uh, recursive functions is to divide and conquer. That's the basic technique. It's to break a large task into subtasks and here's the key. These subtasks should look like the original task. So subtasks could be smaller versions of the original task. And when they are, we can use recursion. So here's a simple example of searching a list of, uh, let's say, numbers for a particular value. We can break up the search task into two subtasks. One is to search the first half of the uh, list, and the second subtask is to search the second half. So divide it, let's say, evenly up into two parts, or as even as you can get it. And then searching the first half looks exactly like the original task, which is to search a list for a value. Searching the second half looks the same. So these small these subtasks are smaller versions of the original task. When this occurs, you, uh, you can use a recursive function to do the entire search. And this usually results in a very elegant solution. And it's, it's kind of hard to... Uh, emphasize this enough recursion is actually even though it is it looks very different from the things that kind of thing we've done before it gives you actually it can give you very elegant solutions in the very beginning we will look at recursive functions that we could just as well implement using iteration and we might it might look like well there's much of a point to using recursion but then pretty soon we'll see we'll run into situations actually towards the end of the semester more we'll run into situations where the recursive solutions are very very nice and easy and if you wanted to do the same thing with iteration it'd be very hard and very messy and very uh, bug prone I would say the recursive functions are a lot easier to set up and understand too may not seem that way in the beginning when you when you start when you're just starting out in recursion 
Okay, so let's take a simple example. We want to display numbers in a vertical list. That is, uh, you start at some value uh, and then you display the digits of a number vertically, one per line. So if you uh, pass in the int 1234, this should produce the output 1, 2, 3, 4. So it takes this number, converts it into four numbers, and puts them out one line at, an, at a time. You can see how you could do this with a loop. It'd just be like dividing by um, thousand, let's say, and then figuring out what's the what's um, what the integer division result would be, printing that out, and so on. And so, one way to solve this using recursion is to break the problem into two cases. Simple case, or the base case, as it's called, is if n is less than ten, we're done pretty much, right? We, if the if if the user, I mean, I'm sorry, if the client calls this function with something like one, you're done. You just print that out and you're done. Or if it's two, just print that out, done, and so on, up to nine. However, if you have a number greater than or equal to 10, we would have to break it up into, into two subtasks. One is output all the digits except the last one, and then output the last digit. The outputting of the last digit is basically just the base case. So for example, if you are given one, two, three, four. We will, we don't we haven't said how we would do these subtasks, but the first subtask would be to display everything but the last one vertically, and then the second tub subtask would display the very last digit. And so here is how you would do it. And you might think, well, wait a minute, how is this happening? That uh, you're calling a vertical, uh, sorry, right vertical function with an int. And you do the base case, if n is less than 10, you just print it out. Else, you call right vertical with one-tenth of the original. So what is this thing really doing? Remember that this depends on um, integer arithmetic. If you divide uh, an integer, assuming that n is an int, and it sure is, um, if you divide it by 10, you are essentially chopping off the last digit, and throwing it away. Okay, so you might think, well, if you call it with some number like 1,234, aren't you going to print this out first? That is, you're going to print out the the last digit first? No, that's not how it works. It turns out you call right vertical with let's say a large number, something bigger than 10, like 1,234. You'll hit this if statement first, and then you'll skip it, because if it's a large number, it's not going to be less than 10, so you, you call this first. And here's where a recursive function maybe doesn't look right the first time you see it, but it is it does work. You have a function, right, vertical, in which you call yourself. And you can, and you can think of all kinds of situations where this would not work, but it turns out it does actually work, because what you do is you make the problem that you're trying to solve smaller. In this case, specifically, you're making it about a tenth of the size smaller. So here what happens is you originally call it 1,234, you divide that by 10, you get 123. So now you can sort of see, now you're trying to solve the problem of printing out 123. How do you do that? Well, you call this function recursively with 123. 123 is not less than 10, so you go here, and then you divide 123 by 12 by 10 to get 12, and then so you call you're calling this with n equals 12, and is 12 is 12 is greater than 10, so this is false, and so you divide 12 by 10, and you call right vertical, and 12 divided by 10 is 1. You pass that in here. This time around, n will be less than. 10 because it's 1 and you print out the 1 okay maybe so now you might be seeing it you print out the 1 and then what happens is now you start returning to back when you call this with a 12 so at this point um, n is 12 and so you you're back to the situation where n is 12 you do 12 mod 10 and so now you can see that you can use you know, use not only the divide but also the integer remainder operator. 12 mod 10 
is 2 and this is how you get the 2 and then once you're done with that you go and print out the 3 and the 4 so trust me this works you might want to try it out uh, set up this function in a main and then call it from the main function so if you were to call right vertical with 1, 2, 3, this would call right vertical with 12, which would call right vertical with 1, and then you hit the base case, you print out the 1, you go back to the situation where you had 12, you print out the 2, because that's 12 mod 10, is uh, or 12 remainder 10 is 2, and then you return back to the case where you call it with uh, 123, 123 mod 10 is a 3 and so on and then actually in this case if you started out with 123 you're done you print out the 1, 2, 3 so these arrows are, are tell you how you call um, how this function calls itself recursively so this is the original call and then these two are the recursive calls the very last one is the situation where you end where you, where you get the end of the recursion because you hit the base case okay so the computer tracks recursive calls and I like to look at it I, I try to look at recursion from the way the computer does recursion that is it uses the stack and that's really to me that's the key to understanding recursion but uh, the way the book describes it they, we just sort of ignores that we just say well the computer tracks recursive calls and that's actually it actually does work it, uh, it's usually the way mathematicians think of recursion too okay uh, so you must know the results of a new recursive call before proceeding it it that's the computer does it saves all information needed for current call to be used later doesn't say what it is but it's actually the stack and then it proceeds evaluation of a new recursive call so the computer keeps track of all of this all right so when it's done with a recursive call it returns to the what's called the outer computation so outer in the sense of here you, you call right vertical with one you you do this step and then you return back to this call the situation where n was 12 and so in that situation you print out n mod 10 and so you get the Okay, so that's what they mean by outer computation. Okay. So um, the big picture of recursion is that you, uh, if you want successful uh, recursion or su a successful recursive function, so you have to have one or more cases where the function accomplishes its task by making one or more recursive calls to solve smaller versions of the original task. So you want to take a big task and break it up into usually uh, one, maybe sometimes many more smaller versions of the original. These are called recursive, recursive cases. One or more cases where the function accomplishes its task without recursive calls. That's the base case. So the key to recursion was, if I were to go back here, to have this not only do you have a recursive step where you use some smaller problem, in this case the problem is one-tenth the size of the original problem of the n, and in, com in addition to that you also need one um, case where you have no recursion and the recursion effectively ends. It doesn't stop right there but that ends the um, recursion that is it ends breaking up the problem into smaller this problem where n is so n is less than 10 is so small you don't have to really do any recursion after that point okay so those are the keys to setting up a successful recursive function that is break up the problem and have a case where you can solve it without any recursion